Maria and Thomas, you have both just come back from the uh, latest COP meeting in Hyderabad, India, for the Convention on Biological Diversity. Now, considered to be one of the biggest international meetings of its kind ever to be held in India, what are your impressions from this conference? It was indeed a very large meeting. I think there were more than 8,000 participants. But also I have a very strong and good impression of the meeting that uh, not only India as a nation uh, is taking these issues on biodiversity and ecosystem seriously and as a host nation really want to make a landmark, uh, but I think also the region and the city of Hyderabad really took this seriously and, and wanted to be part of a, a campaign or awareness rising on, on these issues in, throughout India. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I think that um, you know the conference of the parties of um, the Convention on Biodiversity. It's uh, very friendly meetings. You know, it, it's the whole atmosphere is very friendly. It's like a big exchange uh, think tank uh, party in a way. You know, you have the negotiations and then you have many many different side events going on in the same time, and it's a very friendly atmosphere. And um, I think India brought that tradition forward in an excellent way. It's uh, such a friend of people as well. So it was a very nice meeting. Mm. Yeah. And you indeed, you've been part of the Swedish delegation uh, mm -hmm. for these uh, formal negotiations mm -hmm. for quite some time. Mm -hmm. Over the last few years, though, you have been involved in the development of what we call dialogue seminars. Mm -hmm. Now, the question is, first of all, what are dialogue seminars mm -hmm. and how have they helped and contributed to these more formal uh, high-level negotiations mm. that we have in these COP meetings? Um, the idea came out of the need of even better dialogue in between parties and different stakeholders in difficult issues, like for example the financial resources under uh, the CBD, you know, how to finance what we have agreed upon. And um, it has been a lot of uh, uh, sort of arguments in between different parties and groups in society over these issues. And sometimes uh, not just uh, different views, sometimes also a little bit of misunderstanding maybe. And uh, so we thought that maybe through a better dialogue where people meet more informally, the negotiators and different stakeholders, we could create an even better atmosphere where people understand each other's viewpoints in another way and also very knowledge intensive dialogue, you know, informed by science and also by other uh, experiences from policymakers and practitioners around the world. Uh, so that was what we did. We did one of the seminars in Quito um, this year to prepare for for this conference of the parties on financial resources. And how did it help? How did it benefit? How did it benefit the actual? Uh, I heard, for example, um, a representative from Costa Rica came up to me, um, Carlos Rodriguez Manuel, who were the environment minister in Costa Rica for many years. Um, he said that uh, you know the Quito dialogue, it, it did help concerning content, but it very much helped concerning dialogue. You know that now he knows uh, the EU Francois who was speaking for EU and and so on and can go up uh, to him in the, in uh, in the corridors and talk more about content. And it's the same with Ecuador and other countries. You know that you have. Uh, it's better contact in the group. Maybe 70% of the people who were speaking and negotiating on financial resources were present in Quito. Mm -hmm. uh, and that helps, you know, the understanding of why we need country-specific solutions for uh, different issues and, and also the discussion about market and non-market solutions and, you know, how payment for ecosystem services could be implemented or in some circumstances maybe not what safeguards uh, to safeguard indigenous groups' um, rights uh, that needs to be in place, these kind of issues. And also concerning the flows of international resources from uh, overseas development assistance, aid, mm -hmm. you know, that we had in-depth dialogue about these issues mm -hmm. that really helped. Mm -hmm. uh, that is what people told us mm -hmm. afterwards. So that has been quite sort of groundbreaking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And Thomas, it's been an important conference for you as well. You launched the first Citizen Biodiversity Outlook. Now, first of all, what is the Citizen this is Biodiversity Outlook and what would you hope to achieve with this report? Well, the Outlook itself is, is an assessment <coughs> of how urbanization influences biodiversity and ecosystem services. And this is an area that's very much been overlooked in the past, not only by the CBD, but also you look in the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment and, and in other UN documentation. 
So it, it fills a very important uh, gap in our understanding and knowledge. And I think the launch now in Hyderabad, I think in some ways were very successful because we were able to reach out to exactly those areas in the world that are now urbanizing mm -hmm. most rapidly. For example, mm -hmm. India, which is <coughs> urbanizing tremendously rapidly. And it's important for India now to see that there are all these opportunities in that urbanization process to to actually introduce biodiversity and ecosystems as part of the urbanization and actually be able to change the trajectory. And also that cities now, when we have lots of examples around the world, are doing action on the ground which implement these IGA targets, which in nation states are, are being discussing. And I think this is important to <coughs> highlight because when, when the nations report on biodiversity and ecosystems it's always sort of in, in a negative way that the trends are going down and and, and <coughs> what I think is so encouraging when reporting comes from cities that there's so much positive things happening and they are doing action on the ground and uh, this needs to be mainstreamed into the convention but I think this time we, we uh, uh, really took enormous steps forward to mainstream this issue into the convention and spread it to countries like India, China, many countries in Africa, and also see this network of cities now growing, mm. collaborating and sharing information and mm. knowledge. Mm. Mm. And overall, final question to both mm. of you. Um, what do you think are the most positive outcomes from, from India, from the conference, and what still needs to be worked on? Uh, well, one of the things uh, from <coughs> our perspective from Stockholm Resilience Centre is, of course, the resilience perspective, <laughs> resilience thinking. And we had um, a seminar, Thomas and I and others, together with UNDP on resilience. And uh, it has entered mm. the convention more and more, especially concerning issues related to ecosystem restoration. Uh, but that is something we work on. We think uh, it's some pedagogy and some meaning of resilience that the convention needs. Mm. And I think we have started that work also a little bit with this uh, with this meeting, mm. something mm. we will continue. Mm. Mm. But it's a lot of decisions taken on, on marine issues, et cetera, et cetera, that brings the work of the convention forward. But it is really an implementation phase mm. uh, now that has to be done. Any mm. negatives from your, from you think of? Um, Anything that still is to be worked on? <coughs> well, it's, a, it's regarding quite complex issues like synthetic biology and so on, which mm. is some things to be worked on, mm. but uh, I don't think I might go into that actually mm. now. It, it's a little bit complex in the short. Mm. What you, Thomas? What do you think? Well, I think, uh, in, in, I think people at Stockholm Resilience Centre will be glad to hear that the centre and, and the activities and the research is actually providing a mm. very interesting platform for many UN agencies to start to collaborate. Mm. So the resilience concept, a lot of UNDP, UNEP, <coughs> FAO, mm. Ramsar, CBD, uh, they're all interested in that concept. And we notice also working on, on uh, City Biodiversity Outlook, a lot of interest from the other UN organizations. They want mm. to come together and work mm. with us. And mm. I, I think if we could catalyze that mm. uh, and find the synergies, uh, mm. we are doing something really important. Yes, mm. I really agree. Thank you both. Thank you.